Hello. Hello, everybody. This is uh, this is Daniel. And what do you, I thought you were going to say, this is milk, or we're listening to. Oh, this is milk. Oh, and cereal? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is Woody Landeros, too. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is milk and cereal. This is our, our new business podcast. Yes. Um, I don't know if I should have said new. I mean. Just because. Yeah, you're just. No, it's a pre-roll. Okay. Let's just run it. Yeah? Yeah. We'll run the podcast. Let's, ready? Yeah. Go. I mean, I'm good? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Rolling? Yep. All right. So, today's topic is why milk and cereal? Yep. Why milk and cereal, man? Why is it called milk and cereal? Where did it all start out? (laughs) All right, where does it start? Well, like start, start? Yeah, well, like, like how did we come up with this? Okay, well, I met you at the end of 2015. You know the date. I don't know the date, but I know the time, like the area, like the time in the year. It was the end of 2015. And you know why I know? Why? Because uh, you paid me to um, screen print some t-shirts for you for Gold Kills at the time, right? And I know because I used the money that you paid me, um, and I know specifically I was on work vacation because that business I was with closed at that time of the year mm-hmm. and it helped that you were paying me because I had money for that week plus money to spend on uh, two hotel rooms for New Year's Eve with a couple of my friends nice so that's a, that's I didn't a know very, that story that's a very pivotal like time it was very heartwarming yeah well there's a lot more to it but we can get into it later <laughs> just, that's really uh, that's probably like the last my early thing that I really made time in my life yeah very structured of time in my life. It, 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 that, that distinctively stands out to me because I remember you had your clothing brand, you were doing your thing, and I was doing my thing, and then mm-hmm. I wasn't really doing my thing. Yeah. And then I like you kind of reached out to me to do. You said design work, but then also printing. Yeah. Um, and then we kind of linked up on that, and uh, that's where this like friendship relationship kind of thing started going, where me and you were just shooting ideas back and forth, and then picking each other's brain from time to time. I would drop by, you would drop by, and we would talk for an hour or whatever. Um, I don't know what led to the conversation to we should just start a business together. But I, th- I, I think I, I've always been inspired by you in like right. business wise, design wise, even just like artistically, to say, to your decision making skills. I've always been inspired by you. And like I when that. I was doing Goal Kills, I saw Fresh Bot. Right. And it was like, if Gold Kills can do anything better, it's just get a little bit closer to FreshBot. Right. You know, and I felt like FreshBot was that, like, next step for me, or even, like, two steps. Okay. And I didn't know how to do that, so if you can't beat them, join them. Right. You know? Oh, well, and then when I started talking to you, you were telling me, like, you know, you get to see behind the wall, and you're like, okay, I got to see where you were doing wrong. Yeah. And then I definitely got to see what you were doing right. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. But I think... At the same time, we were both at a point in our lives where um, high school was over, Yeah, right? We both started these brands in high school. Um, we were kind of coming to a point where I, I think we both felt, felt like um, clothing wasn't our passion. Yeah. And art, although we liked it, also was not our passion. And I think there was a point in us that was like, what I like to do is make things, and I like to have an impact on people. Yeah. And I do like business and I like strategy. And I think that was like the, like we were probably coming to that conclusion separately, but at the same time we were friends. So we were kind of discussing things back and forth. Yeah. And it was like, why isn't the clothing working? And it's like, well, yeah. that industry just doesn't work Yeah. on top of, we're not really passionate about like that industry. I mean, if we wanted to hold out, we really love clothing. We would have, we would have evolved with it. Mm-hmm. And we probably would still doing, be still, yeah, sorry. Be still, still doing it to this day, yeah. Because we, you just stick to that industry. There's a way. I mean, there's a way to make millions of dollars in clothing, and there yeah, still well, people, is. people, people that like we grew up with or whatever. They they were doing the same thing like in 2015, right. even in 2013, 12, and they're still doing the same thing right now. But yeah. like, just the fact that we continue like changing and evolving yeah, yeah. just shows that our like business and like the decision that's making skills of it. Do. That's like what we love to do, and I think just like creating things, but then at, at the same time thinking about like if I create things, I'm not gonna make money if I'm just doing it, you know, just for my right for my own matters. Right. I need to figure out like how to help other people and then how to like make meaningful stuff that I can also like charge and right. like have a good living off of. So like that I think 
if the money part wasn't there, we would probably just be making stuff like you know for ourselves and maybe for our close friends. Right. But like since money is in Which there, is you fun. have to think about the business portion of right. it, and you have to be realistic with yourself and like go out there and try to find you know a good job. Like you just got an amazing job, right? Um, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit about that, uh, I don't want to get. I'll too give much you the into spotlight. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. tell us what you do because uh, I, I yeah. think it's really cool that you're out there doing um, that. I was okay, so clothing was kind of over for me, and I was like, you know what, I uh, I got this skill that I've developed, mm -hmm. um, in, and it wasn't just business, but it was uh, this design skill, and I was like, um, and I've had I had design jobs, and I had slowly evolved myself into this design position at the company that I was with, um, it was just a bigger role, and it started to be a little bit more into uh, different things, like I, I was doing more design than just clothing at this point. Um, and so I wanted to find a job in a better economic environment, which is why um, I have a job now uh, working as a digital designer for an e-commerce company in Santa Monica. Um, and uh, it's kind of a, I, I'd like to tell the story a little bit more in depth, and I will at some point. But um, basically, it kind of started with the clothing brand in high school at 14, and, and it led to where I am today, um, which... I think it's just a testament to chase whatever is itching at you. Yeah. Always. And don't don't do it expecting that thing to be the thing that like yeah. is the final result. Like, don't be afraid to change it, yeah. Like me doing that clothing brand, uh whatever amount of years ago was key in leading me to where I am today. Yeah. And they're all stepping stones. How yeah. many people come up to you and say like bro, like where like Where's Freshbot? Or like, are you still doing Freshbot? Because they like you've had an impact on them. Oh right. And like, like, I think they always, get it now, though. I don't hear it. Always I don't hear it think now about. So yeah, yeah. Well, I think you post a lot of great things about like what you're doing today too. Yeah, I moved on and to so, a new like, thing. Yeah. You know, and you have a great following base too. So like, they yeah. understand you. Yeah. Um, but for even like me, I guess sometimes it can get kind of confusing because they're like, "Where's Gold Kills?" Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Well, I think because I also made like a separate thing too. Yeah. And I didn't really have it connected to my personal brand." So then people are like kind of confused, like, like I want to support Gold Kills. Where's Gold Kills at? Right. So, but it was great, like just kind of seeing you grow into like different things, and then also like some of the jobs that that I would like propose to you, or some of like the ideas. I thought like for sure you're gonna say like, nah, I don't really want to do this. But I think that's like what, what like kept me going at times because it was like I would tell you some ridiculous idea or something crazy even like we did like a um electrical access panel for, oh, for cubicles that. Mm -hmm. um that we were we were supplying in Los Angeles and it was such like a it's like a boring thing but then like I called him and he was like stoked about it yeah it's like dude this is my people right yeah. here like yeah. we're doing it yeah but and I would and say that uh exploring that was like i think we both realized with that one was we like business yeah but it can't just be boring yeah and i think that like it needs to also grab our attention that's why we always switch it up mm -hmm. it's so always changing we're, we're slowly figuring out okay like the math on that one made sense yeah maybe not all the logistics mm -hmm. but a lot of the math made sense yeah but even with the math making sense it wasn't enough for us to go all in on it. Yeah. Well, it's still working right now. It's still like... Yeah. Um, well, because the math makes it's sense. It's still kind of, yeah, running, yeah. and it's kind of just... It works even with or without, yeah, like, yeah. the whole yeah. design thing because they still needed... Right. They still need the access panels. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just, like, seeing that, it was, it was... It was weird. It was, like, I would expect anyone to say, like, no, or this is not my type uh, of job, okay. or, like, I only make album covers, mm -hmm. or I only make this. Like, mm -hmm. people were very like specific on what they do. Yeah. And for you it's like you, you, you like the design, it. but you also like okay, so what's what's going on with like the business portion of it too? Right. What's going on like like what are you guys doing currently as opposed to like oh, you need a logo, let me just do it. Right. I want to know. Yeah, let me just finish it. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you were even we were even in there like writing down like the plan and like trying to figure it all out. So like that part I was just like, okay, any design job that I have, I've got to call Daniel. Cuz yeah, I think that's the fun part. The fun part is like, like where does my design fit into this? Does mm -hmm. it fit into this? Should I even do this? Like, do they even need me? 
Like, mm-hmm. does it make sense? And then, I don't know. That design in general is solving a problem. It's not really just about the aesthetic. Yeah. So I, I can't really solve the problem if I don't really know it all the way. Yeah. Um, and you will tell me, too. Like, I don't know if you need this right now. Yeah. I probably wouldn't do this. Or I'll probably just wait on this. Or, you know, right. the current one looks great. The current logo looks great. And then that's also something that I experience with, um, like, great artists and great like business people i feel like they really understand that it's like it is about the sale but it's also about like having it like it has to mean something and it has to actually like impact someone and it has to actually be effective or else it's not going to be effective in your long run like ag came into the studio yeah and like i was for sure like okay he's gonna sell like because i already have like a salesman sort of like mine like right you know what i mean so i was like okay he's gonna sell me the most expensive things and like you know, I have to I have to be able to see that. And he was telling me like, Oh, don't buy those dude. Buy buy like the, the knockoff brand, they work just as great. You know, we can probably like, you know, cut these corners and do this. You'll probably only spend like instead of like a thousand dollars, you'll probably only spend like two hundred, three hundred dollars. Right. And we'll like we'll figure it out. If anything, we can go and find things and reupholster them ourselves. And so like he's all, he was all about like solving the problem. And I think being around like creators that like really like focus on the problem and focus on solving it is like that's that's being a, an effective creator in, in your time right I, I what i liked about you was um you went all in on anything you did even if you weren't sure yeah so like fuck it we need this let's get it we need this let's yeah. do it let's let's like there was no thought in yeah. what when what the efficiency there was really there and then uh, a lot of what you did was also like you, i mean you like things that make sense because you like to do things that make sense yeah so i think that's why you like that design it's style it's like a gift and a curse yeah. too though cuz I even like got offered by the same you know same person AG to go on the not for sale group, mm-hmm. and I I got a little bit afraid because I know how like how much of I how much of my life I like just dive into it, right. and I'm like I I I love not for sale, but just know like if I do this, I will leave everything that I'm doing behind right. because I, learn, I need to focus. You have to learn how to on not for sale balance. I'll be there twenty four seven. Right. Nonstop every good, single night. You know what? That's a good so mentality. So I have to be self-aware. Of that's like, a good mentality. I would say um, not self-aware because at some point in your life, you're going to have to do that. Yeah. But it's like know how much gas to give something. Yeah. And then. Yeah, you see, I don't, I don't know that amount. My, uh, my friend, I'll, I'm all or nothing. Yeah, my friend gave me a really good compliment. But I don't know if it was a compliment. But he said, you know what I like about you, Daniel? You only do as much as you need to do. He's like, he's like, he's like, because I, I design a lot of stuff for him too. He's like, your your design style is very much like, you'll only do what needs to be done. You won't spend any more time on anything extra. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I actually really like that because it's very true to what I do. I'm a very, I don't want to say it's guess. I guess it's efficient. Yeah. But it's like, I'm very much like, all right, let's move on to the next thing. Like, uh, I, I also don't like that quality about me because I think I get bored of things very quickly. I think that's where this works because that's my downfall. Oh, right. Like, I feel guilty when I give the client exactly what they asked for. I always have to put the oh, cherry on top. I don't feel I guilty. I always have to put the cherry on top. I, like, I, I got hired for a one-minute video. I'll give the cherry, but I will give it to you, like, the best way possible, right? Yeah. Like, like, I'll give you an actual cherry. Yeah. If that's what it takes. Yeah. Not, not, not a, a big old blown-up cherry that's like, here you go. Like, I'll give you... See, I'm thinking, like, you order the shake, I'm going to put the cherry, I'm nah. going to put the gold-plated plates, nope. you have to have the seat right, nope. my, my thing push is, in the seat, like, I think I about the whole thing. The cherry for me was, I'm going to fold the shirts for them in a way that they can access and give them away faster. Mm-hmm. That is the cherry. That's not, um, it's not go buy nice boxes, make sure the boxes have the logo on them. Like, yeah. Like, I, I, I agree with that policy, yeah. though. I do. I just... It's um, a downfall for me, for sure, because, like, I try to finish this one-minute video... And then, like, in the back of my head, like, right when I finished it, I was like, I'm not done, though. Like, I, mm. I'm, I'm going to do a third. I'm going to do a 15-second edit for it's their that Instagram. It's artist mentality in you, though. I'm going to do. I know, do it with a lot of artists. I'm going to ask them if this is what they like, like, a thousand times. There's three categories. Sure. There's, four, there's four categories. Yeah. Right? There's, there's bad. There's good. There's good enough. And there's great. Yeah. And everyone wants great. Yeah. But what really you want is good enough. You want good enough. Yeah. You want good Oh no, no no I'm sorry. You want good enough or good. Yeah. Like good is for that prize client, good enough is for the whatever client. Good enough is Shasta Cola. Yeah. Good is Coca-Cola and then great is some sort of premium shit that like is at a hipster store. Yeah. 
but then maybe that's the that's the hardest thing about working with uh, Rebecca, because we have that same mentality. Like right. if I tell her, um, okay, I'll just I'll just deliver what they asked, she'd be like, well, it doesn't settle in our heads correctly because <laughs> we're like, well, don't just do it, like put put your back into it, yeah, you know, yeah. like actually yeah, yeah. actually work hard for it and like try to figure it out, and like I think I, I really need to learn on that. That's something like I think even just realizing it right now. Go for now, good enough and then just polish it, mm-hmm. and that's it. What if I really like polishing, and I'll stick, I'll stay be there the, like twenty four hours. Be and a I'll polisher, just, you know what I mean. Be a polisher. Yeah. Find a way to get someone else. Or maybe to charge get, for the polishing, or charge for the polishing. Yeah. <laughs> or get someone to. I, I definitely know. need to fix that. But sometimes I, it's hard to work on yourself though, because you just like. You know you have these issues, but at the same time... I, I, I like that about you, though, too. Uh, but also, I was going to say the second point I like about you is you're very um, self-improvement. Like, what can I do to be better? Yeah. is a very, like, thing that comes off of you. So, like, uh, I know you, you read all the books, you do the ceremonies, like, you do everything that you can to be better. And if it's... if I know you're doing it. If you learn that one thing, you won. Cool. We're good. Let's go. Yeah. And... I'm striving to do that, and I'm learning about that too because I, I also do the good enough thing, but sometimes I also need to realize that you need to do a certain amount of digging before you get to that next layer, right? Like yeah. there, there is another layer there that is beyond good enough, yeah. but, but you're not going to get there if you're not digging for it. Mm-hmm. So you definitely have to maybe keep chipping away a little bit, but I do like that you will go do that extra thing to learn that one key point. Yeah, and I've learned a few things off of you from business, just off of like uh, things that stick to me. Um, differences in, in labor departments and just differences in, in this type of a thing versus this type of a thing. Like, yeah. there, there's a lot that I've learned off of you um, that I've adapted to my own strategy. Yeah. So, which leads us into milk and cereal at some point. Yeah, we. Well, I think it was. I think it was you, kind of both of us. Wait, did you you approached me. You, with, you wanted to create a business. We're at my house. Was that your house? This with was at, Sterling. This was, yeah. And we were all sitting in I a had circle. A dream. I had a dream. And you had... I had a dream. Okay, what was the dream? Oh, so I had a dream. Uh, oh, yes. You know. I remember the dream because we all smiled after. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a dream um, that I was in a certain part of town and um, Riverside had become this bigger metropolis for some reason. It was like a dream in the future and I'm late to school, which is weird because I don't like school at all, so I don't know why I was in school in the dream. And I was with somebody, um, and like before before school, before a class, uh, we went to a, uh, a cereal bar where they had different kinds of bowls and different kinds of like toppings, and it was like a, a thing, like the cereal bar. You go to the cereal bar, you pick up a cool bowl, and you pick up uh, some cereal, some toppings, and different kinds of milks, and you go and you eat your cereal, and it was like, I, I remember that really stuck with me. Like, oh, that's a good idea. Why not just have a restaurant where I can just have cereal and different kinds of cereal in the morning before I go to school or something? Mm-hmm. And I presented that idea to uh, a couple of us. I think we were just talking. I don't know why we met up that day. We were just hanging out. And uh, I told you guys, I was like, I really want to do it, maybe. Like, I, I, I have the idea. I think it's a good idea. We could put money into it, but I don't think... Um, it's one of those things where I was like, I'm not really, like, everything I had done up to this point, I was really passionate about. And I was like, I'm not really passionate about cereal. Like, it, it's a good enough idea to just do it. It's not mm-hmm. a good enough idea to, like, like pour my heart and soul into. So I was like, I would more than happily get investors on this. Yeah. And that I think that's where the idea kind of sparked. Well, I, and then you can really see, like, where the personalities, like, clash. Because I feel like everybody else was like, oh, yeah, that'd be a cool idea. But I was like, let's do it. Let's do it. And <laughs> you then called I think me the it next day. Took, <laughs> only, yeah, it only took, like, a day. And I was yeah. like, well, what do you think? Let's run the numbers. I, was, I still have the number sheet right. of, like, what it would cost to do in, like, the labor. I was, like, actually getting, like, you I was calling a, different things. You and, gave it a time scale. We talked about um, finding the right place to do it. Uh how many people do we need? What kind of money? Like, how many locations are we looking to do? I sent you a graph of yogurt lands and, mm-hmm. and anything yeah, that was yeah. it. I remember that, that too. That was crazy. Within that, uh, we were in it. Yeah, within that like field, we we met up and did a whole branding thing, and it was like, all right, Bob. And this wasn't even about like the design portion. No, yeah, because we strategy. were we were thinking like, the, and I think that was the most attractive thing that you said was, I'm I'm not really that like 
like emotionally hooked onto this or I don't, I don't really care about it too much. Because and I was like, yes, we had met I that need night somebody. And we were talking about yeah. a cash grab. Mm -hmm. It was like, let's do something that just makes us money. Let's not worry about yeah. it being fun. And Which I don't know how many people would think about cereal place. I don't know. You know what it, I mean? But I that's how our dream. minds work. I had a dream. Yeah. So it just kind of came to me. But then you thought it made sense and I was like, well, yeah, I thought it made sense well, too. let's do it. Yeah. I felt really good after that dream. Um, and yeah, it was like, let's do it. And then it was like, let's meet up and... Um, started discussing it. I don't know where things went off the rails, which is why this is an interesting podcast because I don't even think we discussed it after that point. We like moved on to other things. Yeah. It never it, it was never well, we're like, always busy. Yeah, but it was never like, all right, we're done. There was no closing. We're not yeah, we're not we're not not there was doing no closer. This. It was just like cool, cool. <laughs> I think the let's next meet thing up, is let's meet up and then it was like then you called me for a logo. On the, I don't think we talked for like a month or so. I, we had other things going on. And then it was like, um, you called me for a logo for a real estate thing. I think maybe that's what happened. You got a little more into mm. your real estate stuff. And then... Um, oh, yeah, I was really busy at that time. I was also really busy too, though. Because yeah. I was trying to build my portfolio up, trying to expand the network. And uh, I was actually hoping to move um, to LA, at, I think at that time, maybe... That was like at some point in the year where I was like, I... Uh, I remember you shout, shouting about LA, dude. You were like, I'm going to move there. It's yeah. going to take me one more year. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, we're there. Yeah. We're there. Can I tell and you about... Dude, that was the... You like... You made that dream come true. Speak that shit into existence, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt really that good That was cool. That. And then when you said that. it, when we went to uh, Wolfskill and you told, told, like, we like celebrated that you were actually going to go out there. Oh, right. I was like, oh, man. It was, this it was a good dope. feeling. It was a really good feeling. This it was, was scary. A, a double chest pounder, dude. I was like, Sca heck yeah, man. Scary, but good feeling. Yeah. And it was good to, to uh, follow through on something yeah. that I told everyone I was going to do. Um, and th there was part of me that wanted to back out. And I would say, uh, you know, New Year's is, I, I guess, when this podcast is out, it's either today or it's already passed, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're somewhere near the New Year yeah. in this release. And um, I wrote in my... In my resolution, um, I don't even think I wrote about LA, but that was just something I was saying. That was something I thought was a, a fact of it. Every time I saw you, you said it. Yeah, I definitely said it to people. Yeah. And it was, uh, I wanted a new career um, or just a new place. Same career, new place. I wanted to be in a new place. I, I thought it was LA. I wanted a little more money, so it kind of had to be LA. Yeah. Um, and I wrote down a plan. I don't think... Did I tell you this? Yeah. Did, did I tell you about the plan? I did tell you about the plan. Okay, well, I'll tell everyone else. But the, the plan was... Um, I wrote this plan that had like a breakdown of financial needs, um, emotional needs, um, and career goal needs. Like a, a full... Like, these are this is what I want out of a job. This mm -hmm. is what I want financially. This is what I need emotionally out of this job. This is why I need these three things. Like, this, these three things are the reasons why... I need to do this. Yeah. Um, and at the time, I really liked the place I was at. I had just gotten to a good position with that company. Um, I was in a very high position within the company. I must have been third or fourth guy on, on the totem pole of a, a group of like 30. Yeah. So it felt really it good. Big. Yeah. I, um, and before I left, I had my own office, um, you know, ran my own department. Like I was, I was good. I had my own spot here. I, I was living life really good. I, I I traded a lot of good things for better things, to be honest. But like yeah. at the time, it felt like less things. Yeah. Um. And but I wanted to challenge myself, and so I wrote this plan, saying that by October eighth, which was, no no I'm sorry not October 8th, October third, mm -hmm. um, which. I believe was a Thursday or Friday. I was going to um, decide to apply for positions um, either in Los Angeles or somewhere to get out of the current position I was in. And I wrote this full plan and it was like execute, you know, update your portfolio. All the, like there was a lot of elements to the plan. Yeah. Update your resume, update your portfolio. And by October 3rd, You'll make your decision. And and when I was writing this, I was really torn. I, I wanted to stay where I was at because I thought maybe, who knows, in a year, in a year, maybe this company's a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I don't hate it now, but I know I know in a couple of months I won't love it just because of the way I am. Yeah. And 
and maybe in a year I'll really love it and I'll want to stay another year and I would hate to leave something just because off of pride alone and because I told everyone I was going to leave. Like, I, I would hate to make that decision off of pressure. Like, I really have to make sure it feels right. So in my plan, it's set that on October 3rd or October 5th, I'm sorry, which is a, a Friday. That's a Friday. October 5th, I decide to leave for Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, the plan, um, funny enough, a year later, uh, I actually started the plan in August because I felt the itch a lot sooner than I thought I was going to feel it. Mm -hmm. I actually felt the itch way earlier in the year. Um, credit to a lot of people in my life that uh, took me to places and experiences that I did that made me feel like, no, I got to get out of here. Yeah, like, I really got to go. And so I started the plan sooner than I thought I would. And I really cranked it into high gear. And I'm glad I started it when I did mm -hmm. because my first day at my new company was October 8th. Wow. So three days after the Friday. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, huge. You took that leap, dude. I took that and leap. And a lot of people don't in their life. I put pen to paper, though. And then the reason I say that story right now, and I hope whoever the hell hears this, is put pen to paper. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of a new year. I don't care what anyone tells you about how the year started two weeks ago, bro. You're not really out there getting it. You, whatever. You're a loser <laughs> for starting today like everybody else. You're a fucking sheep. No, fuck that. If you want to start today... Because it feels right. Because it feels right that everyone else is in the same spirit as you. Fuck it. Start today. I don't care. Nobody yeah. cares. Fuck that. Who cares that the year started two weeks ago, two months ago? The best day to plant a tree was yesterday. The second best day is today. Yeah. Right? That's how, that's how it was for... See, your, your story is very similar with that like leap. Because I feel like I took that leap last year, leaving my job. Right. Like It was so confusing for me because I was like... I know I want to do this. I love so that leap scary. story of you. It was so scary. Yeah. To actually like just do it. Yeah. And now, dude, I'm so happy that I did that. I know like I, I, I'm scared of the person that would have stayed. You know, I'm scared of me that would have stayed. Right. Like that. Like I'm, I don't want to be I'm that, scared guy. Of that guy. Yeah. Like I don't ever want to be that guy. Yeah. And it's just like it's really it's really amazing like actually taking that leap. Because most people don't. Yeah. Like, well, ever. They don't realize how scary You can talk to, like, grandparents, and they'll be like... It's scary to stay. Yeah. They don't realize... What I, what I, I like that story about you, because you had told me that earlier in that year, mm -hmm. and I, there were certain decisions I had to make financially where I was like, you know, fuck, this is going to handicap me for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Like, do I really need to do this? And then I remember thinking to you, and you were just telling me, like, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills or whatever. It's like, fuck it. And yeah. I'm like, yo, I thought about it. I was like, yeah. Fuck it. Like, yeah. really, who cares? Like, at the end of the day, like, you'll be you'll fucking fine. You'll always be fine. Especially, yeah. <laughs> especially that we have, like, I and, mean, and, and we have the family and we have, like, to we're be able very, to like, back. We're very privileged in yeah, that position. Yeah. But use it if you have it. If and we have, have a talent. Position, so especially right. if you have a talent, like, you can definitely go out there and right. make a living off of it. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, street dancers that just go out in the street and they, like, they make their living. They do it. You know, they live in a great place. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you can do it, especially with, like, a talent and with, like, knowledge. So, like, once you know you have that talent and knowledge, yeah. you're able to take that jump knowing that you've already measured the jump. You've already, like, calculated it. You know, like, you right. know what it takes to do it. Right. And sometimes you don't, but you know that you have, like, the strength to do it. Right. Um, that knowledge is, is definitely key because I think I got everything that I – I got most – maybe I didn't get everything, but I got everything that I needed in my mind um, – out of real estate that I needed to do like business wise to be able to grow like artistically. Right. So like I I just felt like fulfilled there. I was like, I'm not learning anything next week or the week after or the week after that. I need to move. Right. I need to move now. I need to move quick because then I'm gonna be wasting time. It's weird it's a weird time that we live in because um uh I was having a conversation with a coworker of mine and, and we were I was telling her the story about how I moved and and um yeah you know, I was like I was like yeah it was two years in and I was like it's time to go and she's like you know honestly after two years in something there's not much else there is to learn there. Yeah. To be honest, like there there is a lot. No, you know what? I think it's a lie. If you didn't learn it in the 2 years, you weren't getting after it. No. Yeah, there Cuz you should learn it within the 6 months. The first 6 months. Yeah. I think there's a statistic out there that's in between 6 to 12 months that you learn. That's when you learn. Yeah. After that, you learn it. And then you're and then you're a robot. You work yeah. the routine. Spit. You work, you know, you you know what you do. You yeah. do that task yeah. and you finish it and you're over with. Right. That's why I love being like Move. an independent filmmaker yeah. because we have to deal with lighting, the camera, the editing, 
the actor, then, like all that stuff. We have to deal with multiple things. And working like in the industry, they'll tell you, you know, you're only camera operator. Right. Do this, do this task and finish it. Right. Like me and my job, that it's always like, it's always changing. Like I don't know. Right. Like I might be doing audio this day and I have like, I'm still like learning it and I right. might be doing lighting this day. Right. It might take me a lot longer to learn it because I'm doing like multiple jobs. Yeah. But it's definitely like, it's, it's fun doing like jumping around and trying to figure things out because yeah. like I can't, I cannot work in that like um, too much of like a structured environment knowing like what I'm going to do tomorrow and knowing that I have to do it the same way. I think doing, doing things the same way is the part where I get stuck on. Cause like if I have to create something different every single day, then I think I'll, I think yeah. I'll be good. Yeah. But if I have to like factory line something, right. I would drive myself crazy. Right. I would also, um, Back to the line, lineal story that we were just telling, um, milk and cereal fizzled out at some point. And I think, to be honest, I think we both just felt like uh, there's something bigger here. I don't want to spend all my time trying to start a cereal store. Yeah. Like we have a bigger, like I think the two of us still haven't come to that conclusion, but we have like a bigger, and that's what this podcast is about, and that's why we named it that. Yeah. We have like a bigger goal in mind and a bigger company in mind, right? We just didn't feel like it was cereal. And we wanted to spend a little more time developing whatever that is going to be. It's funny because I did come up to you about not for sale at that time. It was around the same time, but it was also around the same time I was trying to move. So I was just trying to find something to cling on to. Yeah. I think. And uh, credit yeah, to Rebecca. You said something that wasn't. Um, where she was just like, I was trying to like lure you in. And she's, she's like, shows up to the meeting and she's like, I don't want you guys to rush into something. And I'm like, what do you mean? This is a good idea. Yeah. And we both get, like, we rile each other up. So it was like, yeah, no, like, we're going to do this. And, yeah. blah, blah. and then it was like, no, you should really think about it. And I you're was definitely like, my hype man. Yeah. yeah. So then, yeah, I know, you're my hype man. Let's yeah. do it. Uh, and then she was like, no, you should think about it. And you should answer some of these questions. And then, like, I was really thinking about it. I was like, okay. Which credit to her then, that's when I was like, okay, well, right now, I want to move. Yeah. So I don't even have time for this hypothetical focus. thing that we're talking about it's that focus dude. yeah focus like i didn't have focus i think that's what yeah. rebecca did for me too dude like yeah when i was um when i was in marcus and Melchap, she i came didn't, in and scolded us i didn't have like <laughs> focus and i was like she started telling me all these things like you can do it like yeah. you can just like focus and i'm like i could do this i could do that she told me to write down all the things right. that i want to do right it filled up an entire page and then just we still have this bottom. page and she's like is this what you want to do? Pick one. And then she started crossing things out and I was like, no, not the milk and cereal. <laughs> yeah, no. no. <laughs> it's that it's the logo on our on our um on the podcast. It's that paper rip. She started ripping out right. the paper, dude. Yeah. Just, I was like, no, no. Dude, I had a, a crepe business. No. Oh, I remember the crepe dude, business. There was like so many ideas. The vending machines, I was like sharing with her like everything that I wanted to do. Right. And she started shutting it all down. She was like, pick three. And then podcast, dancer vlogger boom and that's one year now one year that's what i've been doing nice and like How a lot that? of people were telling me like dude you seem so focused yeah and i'm like i'm fucking crazy man yeah. <laughs> i want to do everything in the yeah, world yeah, yeah. but it like it really just i don't know it, it gives it gives focus to what you're trying to do yeah and if you wanted to live in 30 different places you might not ever move you know like if right. you pick one spot like you're like i'm going to la in one year yeah. And you'll do it. Right. You'll really get there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then after that, you have step two, step three, and it's yeah, like yeah. growing from there. Yeah. So I, I even had like till 4 a.m., like music group. Dude, I was just right. I was just trying to do we everything. Were, we were kind of all over the place. Yeah. Well, I, I saw that, and that's where I was like, let me hop in on this. Let me, yeah. let me take this and mix these two things together. I think um, from a standpoint, um, I did like – it was good that I focused because – that I, the next time we were at the bar again. So the first time we were at the bar was over that. Yeah. The next time we were at the bar was a celebration of you made me it. leaving to LA. So I, I would I would credit that conversation to being like, okay, well, you're right. Yeah. I need to focus, and this isn't my main focus right now. I'll come back to this when it is. I think we're coming to a place where we we, we are going to have to have another conversation about other things. But um, I do appreciate the ability to focus on one task and really execute on it. Um, and I think, although milk and cereal isn't probably in our future, I think this podcast is a great experiment in terms of like figuring out business as we go along. Because we both have ventures right now that are not anywhere near where we want them to be. Yeah. Um, and it'll be interesting to see where we are a year from now. I always tell Joseph, I hope 
I hope I'm not doing the same thing I'm doing right now in a year. I always tell him that. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I always want to change things up. I always want to switch things up. Right. It could be around the same thing, but like I always want to be trying different things and like growing in different areas. I would say this, this is that, a good time in our lives. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? 23? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 24. Um, and every year has been different, drastically different, and built on top of the year before. Yeah. It's a like as much as you think, like me meeting you in the end of 2015 was such a, a bullet point in this greater linear story. Cause I had something that happened to me in the summer of that year that led me to leave the first place I was at that led me to working for Red Bull for six months that led me to, um, you know, uh, working for the company I was with for three years that eventually within all of that time, also other things are going on that led me to hang out in L.A. for a day. Oh, shit, I need to move to L.A. Mm-hmm. I moved my friend to it's L.A. It's all connected. When I, you really look at the story, I, I it's moved, all really connected. I moved three or four of my friends to L.A. with me. Yesterday, I hung out with two of my closest friends from high school. Um, one of them lives in Hollywood because of me. And and the other one uh, is taking an acting class in uh, in um, I believe Englewood, um, and uh, has been hanging out with me in Santa Monica for the past couple of days. And it's like when I first moved there, I was like, "Shit, I don't have any friends. Yeah, what am I gonna do? Uh, why did I do this? Yeah." And now it's like my friends will, your friends will follow you. Yeah, you need to set the tone. Um, and, and this is like a forward thinking part of the podcast because we're entering 2019, and I do think it's key to really think your year out. Uh, my goal for this year will be to, I think that my friends and the people around me move a lot faster and move a lot more efficient when I, uh, when I lead them and just and stop being the guy who rides in the background and it's just like, yeah, yeah, directing them from behind, like, let me lead from the front, Yeah. and uh, this is the way we're going, and we're going to go this way. Um, and I think a lot of people trust my leadership now, and I need to um, basically take that and run with that and do something with it. Um, and I think that that's where this podcast is going to go. Um, I think at some point we're going to come up with an idea, and there will be a segment where we update people on what direction we're heading in mm-hmm. um, for the next year. Sweet. Yeah. I think that was a mic dropper. Ooh. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank right. you guys for listening. Yo, like, quick quick little shout out to Rebecca for that day. Yeah, beautiful. Of, like, the talk about focus. You know, shout out to all of our friends shout that have been helping us. Shout out to her for that us. day at the bar. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, then I, I ended up here. Um, key points for 2019. I got, I got maybe five. Meditate. Write your goals down. Um, do something every day that leads to those goals. Work out. And eat better. I would just say focus and leap. And leap. Good good call. Yeah. And and whatever goal you have, you're gonna find the beautiful result in the failure. It's not in the end it's not in the end goal. Right? Yeah. Like the the beautiful like it's like going to It's the journey. Go buy someone a gift. Right? But it's sold out. Right? So you go with the second best thing on the shelf. Or you go to three different stores. Or you go somewhere else. Yeah. You have to get a little more creative, and you find a better gift.